already hate me. But mm. given the Giants' history, I, I wouldn't hate them giving a couple of extra looks, particularly to uh, black coaches, potentially here. When you look you at can't the... really see that's not fair. Welcome to this giant world. How is everything going with the big blue? I see you all and I respect you all. I would like to highlight something that Ken Rosenthal brought up during their broadcast with Michael K on the Michael K show. Now, I do respect Michael K. And I respect his show. I respect what he do. He does. As an analyst, uh, I, I, re I respect what he does from a New York Yankee standpoint. I've always uh, listened to my <clears throat> Michael K. And I've respected Michael K. But one thing that... Uh, I don't know if it bothers me or not, but when Ken brought up he wouldn't mind seeing black coaches considered for the New York Giants job as Michael K was taking a drink of his taking a sip of his drink he uh, it looks like almost spilled his drink to answer this question is referring to the black quarterbacks. I'm sorry, referring to the black coaches. Saying that basically, you know, how can you say something like that? Figuratively speaking, how could you say something like that when the New York Giants for a long time has had a black general manager? Yeah, but that black general manager did win two Super Bowls, but was fired after going to the playoffs mid-season. Okay? But you keep this guy, Dave Gettleman, and let him serve out his tenure. Uh, after the abysmal four years, he was in position of being the general manager for the New York Giants. You still allowed this guy to walk off into to the sunset and retire. Now, I can't say that for Jerry Reese, the black general manager for the New York Giants. Ken Rosenthal, if I'm saying his name right, also brought up a great point. The New York Giants have, has never had a black coach. Not at one point. Never. Michael Kay goes on to say, hey, it's the best man for the job. So you mean to tell me, Michael Kay, that Joe Judge was the best man for the job? Is that what you're telling me? Joe Judge was the best man for the job. Hmm? Ben McIndoo was the best man for the job. Pat Shermer was the best man for the job. And a list, a long list of other coaches that were relieved of their duties were the best for their job to coach these black athletes because most of the NFL is black. Referring to the athletes. Referring to the players. So only white men are capable of coaching black boys. So black men cannot coach black boys and men. Black men. So black men can't coach black men. That's what I took out of what Michael K basically said and his partner they both jumped on Ken Rosenthal's theory for no reason you know I mean 
It's like anytime you mention anything black, yes, yes, we're here too. You damn skippy. Yes, we're here. Yes, we are. And you're going to answer that. He brought, uh, Michael K brought up, you know, that hasn't been put in place since, you know, the black quarterback thing or what have you. Yeah, you damn skippy. We can play quarterback too. They bring up Brian Leftwich, the offensive coordinator for Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yes, granted he has Brady. However, he he has doctored a top three offense in the league for three seasons. I'm I'm not sure of the seasons, but it was a few seasons before Brady. When he was top three offense. Why is he not looked at? Why is Eric Bieniemy not looked at? Because you have a white man coach. And Andy Reid, that's supposed to be the offensive guru. I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I'm just not. I'm not buying it. Andy Reid is cool, and I like Andy Reid as a coach. But... When Andy Reid was in Philadelphia, his offense was okay. It was okay. But it seems to have went to another level while teaming up with Eric Bieniemy. You know, I could be I could be wrong there, okay? Sue me. I could be wrong there. But Black coaches do deserve to have a serious look when it comes to hiring or when it comes to interviewing black coaches for head coaching positions in the NFL. I look if you look at my video a few videos before this one that I did I questioned New York, the New York Giants ownership on their racist position. Uh, and my position was I'm just looking at the results and what happened. Okay, so you hire Jerry Reese because I guess Jerry Reese was the maybe the next man up in within the organization because that's the Giants way to hire within Jerry Reese picks up a few people onto the team gets the team going two Super Bowls bam okay then Jerry Reese, you get two Super Bowls, and then your team goes to the playoffs. They get bumped in the first round, and then Jerry Reese gets fired the next season, in season. But you keep Dave Gettleman. You do not seriously look at any head coach or potential head coaches that are black. You don't even seriously give them a, a real serious look. It's like the Rooney Rule is in full effect. You interview maybe one black candidate. Then that's totally not fair. When most of your players are black. That doesn't make any sense. So you can all miss me with that. Michael K and everybody else who wants to defend that position. You know, Ken Rosenthal gets hell of a lot of points from me for that. That's a fact. That's a fact. You let me know what you think in the comment section below. You don't got to be racist to comment against what I'm saying. Okay, but 
I do want to know what you think. I appreciate you all. I love you all, except for the ones I don't. Peace. Already hate me. But mm. given the Giants' history, I, I wouldn't hate them giving a couple of extra looks, particularly to uh, black coaches, potentially here. When you look at you can't the... really see. That's not fair. What do you mean One of the fair? few teams that had a, a black GM for a long time. I understand, but they haven't had a black head coach, and they've had a black quarterback start one game. But most teams have not had a black head coach, and most teams have not had a black GM. They've had a black GM who won two Super Bowls. I don't think they have to be held to that standard. You pick the best guy. I hear you. Find, I mean, the other te- find the other teams that have had a black quarterback at this point start one game. Yeah, but of the of the of the three we're talking about, head coach, quarterback, and GM, there's a lot fewer black general managers than quarterbacks and head coaches, and they had a black general manager. And also, the the, the game that the black quarterback started really, you know, set this whole thing in motion. Well, but hold on. But by the way, we're, yeah, that's a good point. By the by the way, though, um, you, that's that's making the standard for the. I'm not saying. See, this is an important delineation. I'm not saying they need to have a black head coach to prove that they're not racist. Because basically that's what we're saying. Oh, well, they had a black GM. They don't need to prove that they're not racist. A, I don't know that that necessarily means that. And B, I'm not saying it for the purpose of of proving anything. I'm saying for the purpose of the things that we talk about in this league. You know, trying to actually change leadership right. and have black people in positions of power. It's, it's, no, it's, absolutely. It's, it's New York City. It's a market that makes sense. There are a lot. It appears like half the options out there are black. But you had mentioned their history. That's what I'm jumping on. Not the opportunity. Of course, right. I want to see. You know, Byron Leftwich to me has has done enough that he deserves a head coaching job. All right. So I'm with you 100 percent there. I'm just attacking what you said about you know their history of never having a black quarterback or head coach. That that's the direction they should go in. I'm just saying that I don't think it's an issue as much because of having a black general manager. So you know they don't have any issues with giving a African American an authority position within their organization. I just I think it's just kind of coincidence Peter that they really haven't had the opportunity to do that. And if that's true, I I, I certainly wouldn't see why there wouldn't be a really credible black coach who's at least seriously up for this job. Um uh, well, the, the way, favorite seems to be the, the at least the public favorite seems to be um Brian Flores, so I would I would think that he was gonna, he's going to get a major look. Well, me too. I would think that between Flores having the great last couple of seasons and and the and being from Brooklyn, there's a nice story there. But at the same time, we're still sort of hearing what the story is for why it didn't work out in Miami. I mean, well, I, I I don't. Is it as simple to say, oh, he didn't get along with the quarterback, so that's why they moved on? What what actually happened though? Well, that, that, that's what they'll find I, out. I, but I think that was that there, the, the GM and the head coach butted heads over the quarterback situation. So I think that's what it just came down to. They didn't like that, you know. Even though I don't know how committed they were to Tua, right? There were rumors that they were going to trade him for Watson, right? They were back and forth with him and Fitzpatrick the year before, but they seem like they've settled on him the way he played in the second half of the season, and, and it sounds like that. The verbal abuse he apparently gave the quarterback is a major reason why he's not here.